Hello, it's Sarah and the dogs and Joe and everyone. No. <laughs> I'm going to do some, what I'm calling palette tree ornaments, but they're not Christmas palettes or whatever they're called. Um, these are just popsicle sticks and I decided that this would be my, my ornament this year because I really thought it was such a cute idea and so I've just made it smaller. Now these are not something new. This has been uh, a kid's craft for years you know your kids might have even made one at school and brought them home before um, anywho I got a little crazy um, I don't actually have like a standard popsicle stick like say okay these are the two and a half inch ones this is a, a standard popsicle stick size right but it's shorter so they're they're shorter but they're the same width now these are this is a stirrer See the difference? And then this is, oh boy, right here. So this is from the wood pile. And it says jumbo craft sticks because it's more of a tongue depressor size. So those are the ones that I used. Um, but you can use whatever you have. And I actually chose to, I actually got really, really jumbo ones. Look at these. So these are what I used to make the 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 trunk of the trees on these because they're taller but this one was just I just cut a regular so use what you have but I had a lot of this but then of course I did go to the store because I wanted to get different stars so I got I ended up getting these this back big bag of stars it was like $2.99 but there's three different sizes and they're the same like thickness as a popsicle stick so I was going to do this tutorial yesterday, but I got carried away. So I made, let me show you this. This is, what is this called? Burlap. So um, I had lots of trims, and so I put burlap, a little trim, like a loopy trim, and then some pearls. And then the star ornaments are, um, stop, Kirby, um, charms. But... I love it. I love how it turned out, but it took so long because I was digging through all my supplies. And then look at this one. This one I used like brown lace on the tree trunk, which I really didn't need to. And I put brown like ribbon on the base and a little, all little antique pearls. And then this is lace, like a loopy lace. And oh, I just thought it was so cute. And I put an angel for the star. And then some of this. This is this that like dollar bin um, bling. But these took me like a long time because I was kind of pulling all these different um, supplies that I have, which I enjoyed. But my intention was to just do a basic um, decoupage um, tree, right? So that's what I got here. This is a uh, a line of Christmas paper that I had in my stash and I just cut different ones so I'm just going to show you how I did it but this was the basic idea I didn't even put a base on this one I just put a big red ribbon at the bottom and then these were a couple other ones I did the same way but they're just in that taller style so you just get an opportunity to have one more let's see one two three four five yeah, there's six on these, and I haven't varnished these yet. I only put the Mod Podge because I did put, I have this varnish, this sparkle varnish, and I don't think you can get this anymore. I have a different version of it. It's this, the Starlight Varnish, which uh, it's by Americana, and it's kind of littler glitter is in there anyway. But um, you can keep them plain, or you can embellish it. So I was thinking I might put little like um, on this one because this was actually I was dying to use this paper because I hadn't I never used it I bought the paper pad it's the Kirby Teasdale studio um, by the paper studio this is from Hobby Lobby and I'd never used it and I just thought it kind of had plenty of green in there it was just very um, Victorian so I decided to try it and I love how it looks so I could put little bows on here pearls just a couple pearls I could just leave it plain so this is the idea though I just I did want to show you um, this is how I've been adding I'll show you I'll show you that in a minute um, 
all right so basically what I, I'm just going to show you how I did it so first thing you're going to do is I'm just going to write this down because I think this is four inches yeah so you're going to have six branches let's call them so it's going to be four inches three and a half three two and a half two and one and a half and then this little guy is like about like a one and a quarter and I just cut him from a little scrap piece so let's see yeah that's about one and a quarter but a one inch or a one and a quarter so a one two a one and a quarter inch for the base and then you need a star so I bought like I said I got these um, this one was what I had in my stash so that's why I went to Hobby Lobby to get the flatter ones and it's a little more dimensional which looks fine but I wanted it to be the same thickness so I got these and they have large medium let's see here's another medium this is the large so it has three sizes and I used um, let's see this one I used the medium because I wanted to fit the angel so that's a medium but this one's a small so I think a small looks perfectly fine and I happen to do all these in gold which I think looks nice I think for the um, antique look it has it looks nice but I mean I think I'll do one with silver just because to change it up a little so the first thing you're gonna do so this is what you're gonna need you're gonna take your like these are not popsicle I mean they're popsicle sticks but they're more um, this is they call them jumbo craft sticks but they're they're like a tongue depressor they're not like a real like if you have a popsicle your stick is never this big that's why I said like I have these little ones these half these two and a half inch ones see look this is the difference this is a true popsicle stick size and it's like probably half the width of that so you're gonna need like five or six of these because you can probably get two out of one and I just take a pencil and I use my grid here because the first one's going to be four inches so I just line it up on the grid I'll zoom in a little bit I mean it's not rocket science and I just make a score and then go over to four so that's number one then we're gonna to go to three and a half so I line it up oh my god my dog three and a half and see you could get a one and a half out of here too so here's your one and a half so that's gonna be number six right I said there was six so this is number two and number six and then what else do I need whoops number three is going to be a three incher and then I could probably do a two incher so this is number five and this is number three so I just need number four now so the fourth one one two three four so two and a half two one two and a half and then like a I'll just go to the I'll make it one inch so this is going to be the base so this is number um, two and a half what did I just say yeah this is two and a half so that's one two three so this is number four so I should have one two three four five six okay and then Joe lent me this which I have tools like I have it just wasn't big enough because I my tools are more for jewelry like I have this thing that I've been cutting the shanks off buttons with and stuff but this is just a regular it's like a wire cutter a regular tool but all you need to do is have something sharp enough and then you're gonna take it and hold it right at the line and I really hold I really push down and just start wiggling and you bend and you break it so I'm gonna do the same thing and you know you could cut your um, the edges like you could cut them 
any angle you want. You know, I mean, you could change it up and do however you want your tree to go. So that's the bottom. So here's number two. So you're just going to do that. And even if it's um, jaggly or whatever, we're going to see how that has like uh, not exactly a smooth cut. I'm going to sand them just a little bit, not nothing major. So here's number six and here's number two. So you're going to do that. I don't want to make this too long, but um, I think I hate to stop once I'm in the process of doing something. Um, all right, so this is going to be the base. So yeah, give it a squeeze. And sometimes I can feel it giving, like these must be pretty sharp. Yeah, I mean, it's if you squeeze it hard, it pretty much cuts it. Um, all right, so this is four, five, six. I just need number three. And the base. All right. So you can see, I want to put one of these medium stars. That each one is a tad... And I just kind of did this by hit and miss when I first started doing it because I had started with some long ones, but I like the flow of this. Like, I think it's pretty, it's a tall, tr anyway. Um, and then this would be the base. Yeah, that's going to work. All right, then I'm going to take, now you could probably use this. No, this is going to be too short. So that's why for this specific one, you, you could take one of these off or say take the bottom one off and then use one of these, that, that would work. So, but I just like the option of having an extra rung because then I get to use another piece of paper. So on this one, I'm only using five, a base, and that fits fine, and a star, cute. So this is the, that's the shorter version and here's the taller version. So it just so happens that, and I kind of like the middle part to be a little thinner, but it doesn't have, I don't know why I'm being so picky about it. You know, I'm just going to do, so if you want to do the taller version, you would just take one of these and this doesn't always work first time either. So, but I just take and center it up. See, it didn't work. Depending on how the um, wood grain goes, I guess I could um, use like an a, a exacto blade. See, that's not going to work because I want it to be tall over there too. Let me try it one more time. But like I'm sure I could take, like let's see, I have an X-Acto blade. I didn't, I've always done it the other way, like just winging it and it's worked fine. Of course I'm on camera. Let me just see if I can do this, like make a score. Uh-oh. My ruler moved. And see if I can just, yep. All you got to do is score it. And it works. So I got that to go in half pretty good and I'm just gonna have to sand it I know I'm still zoomed in I'm so sorry all right so this and I would just cut off the top and you're not gonna see the top or the bottom anyway so it really doesn't matter but I'm um, just I don't know it's just how I roll um, okay so that's my what is it called the tree trunk and then here's how I do it. I would glue the base and the tr and the star first and then start at the top and just evenly space them and I do lay it down on my grid here so that I can evenly make sure they're centered. 65432 I wonder if you can hear the kids they're in the basement. All right? So that's how it's going to look. Ta-da! But before you do any of that, you're just going to want to sand and make it look pretty. So I just have some old yucky, oh, here we go, sandpaper. 
and just take it and get the main just so you don't get splinters you don't have to get it perfect so see I just took off those splintery parts so you're gonna do that to each one now which one of it had like a really remember I had those I don't know it looks pretty good now but like yeah just those rough edges you just sand them right down and make them smooth so that is that then once you've done that um, you're gonna pick your papers now this was kind of fun right so we're gonna put that aside I'm gonna do another one um, of this Christmas paper because it's super cute so this is another paper pad from, here it is, um, Hobby Lobby, and it's called Pine Street Square. So I'm going to take just one, I can't tell, oh, and the other thing is, if you're decoupaging, this paper is nice and, um, it's not a thin paper, but it's not your thickest paper because the other one, this guy that I did, this cardstock was really thick and it's not as easy to decoupage when you use a thicker paper. So just FYI, that was, it was nice to have a little bit of a thinner cardstock. I like that. I didn't use any of that. I didn't use that. I just chose mainly, oh, I like the Santas. I didn't use Santas last time. I need six, right? Well, I'm not going to use blue. Well, I'm not going to use that one. I'm staying away from red right now. I'm kind of keeping it. Oh, I like to use this for the... Um, you know, I had plenty of um, scraps over here. Duh. This was from when I made the other one, so I can still use this. Um, but I want to use the Santa. That was one that I didn't use. All right, let's see. Didn't use the red ones. So here's what you do. You take your papers and just lay them out on top of each other like this. This is going to be for the base, just the music notes. I like that for the base. And so let's see. I don't have as many, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. I'm going to use Santa. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't really like this at the bottom. Hmm, maybe I'll use this one. I haven't used this one yet. So anyway, you just kind of get your papers how you think they would look nice. Like, let's look at my other one just to see. And you line it up like see how this says holly a little bit and there's like little holly in there this says mistletoe this just said peace and jingle i couldn't really get it perfectly centered like i did on this one where it says cheer and season's greetings in that one but what you do is you take the rung so once you kind of like and these are all see look this should be sanded just because i'm going to trace around it um, so let's see if I like this. I like the Santa, but I think I want him to be here. And you can add more red, more whatever. I think I like that. I don't know that I love this one. I don't know why. That is the trees. I didn't use this one yet. This one has like 
instead of the trees. This is harder than it looks, you guys. <laughs> All right, I think I like that. I think it needs to be grounded with that. That's where I'm going with. I didn't, I didn't use one, two, three, so now I'm using more papers. So what you do is, so now that they're how I like them, I'm gonna take the biggest one, and I just take my pencil, and just find a spot that you like on here. So there's, especially this type of paper pad, it ha it's rustic, right? So it has, some like patchy places where the paint came off a little bit. I kind of like that though. Or if you just really wanted it a lot more red, like you would put it here. But I'm going to go with like a spot that's a little bit more, I don't know, I kind of like this. It's red and green. I mean, and if you're trying to save paper, you can just use, I'll, that's what I'll do. I'm going to move it right up to this corner. And it might be a little hard to see the lines, but I just basically find where I want to go and then cut that out. And because I just traced it, it's going to be a tiny bit um, bigger than the wood. Hopefully I didn't just mess up. Yeah, and because the thing is, when you do write on the on the face of the paper, like you could flip it over if it's just a random, um, but if you try to erase, you could erase off the design of the paper. Sometimes if the paper's really thin, it can happen like that. So that was number one. Here's number two. Let's do some Santas. And then I'll go, um, I'll get off camera and I'll, I'll finish sanding all these. And I'll um, show you the Mod Podge, which you guys know how to do this, but I want to show you my little technique. These guys kind of go up on an angle. Hmm. As long as I get one in the shot, I'll be happy. So I'm going to do this, like just center him. Yeah, I still have to sand those, but... I didn't want to make this too long because I my videos are so long. Somebody messaged me, or not messaged, but left a comment that like they can't watch an hour video because they don't have the streaming or something. And I didn't know that you had to stream YouTube. But I don't know. I mean maybe I don't know. I don't I'm not a techie, so I don't know the rules. But alright, so I will go off camera and I'll show you the next step. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint my star and the tree trunk silver metallic paint. Super, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Yeah, this is the one that I um, sanded. Uh, yeah, it still has like pieces that are a little bit sharp, but they're going to be behind it. And I may have to put two coats on the silver. And I don't, I'm not sealing it or anything. I'm not doing anything fancy. Um, and the glue doesn't really grab this metallic paint as easily either. I noticed that when I was gluing. But it will grab it. And so I might do two coats. Um, on this one, I actually embossed with embossing powder. So there's so many things that you guys have in your stash. If you don't have silver or gold metallic paint, but you have embossing powder, you can emboss. And, you know, I mean, just paint. It can be yellow, and you can put stickles on there. All right, so I can still see through that, but I'm just going to let that dry. Um, all right, so now before you start to collage your papers on. Let's have a look at this. Let's see if we like the papers. Because on my other one, I told you, I did switch out 
one of the papers, but I think I like this. I think it looks pretty. I think I switched from what I showed on camera, I switched the bottom one back to this plaid instead of the one. No, this is the one with the reindeer. Yeah, this is a reindeer, and he's upside down. But I like it. It looks, you know, it's just like that's the first one, that's the second one. It looks fine. This says season joy, joy, the Santa. I got a Santa in there. I like it. So I'm going to go with it. Um, you are going to, okay, so everything's sanded. I'm just going to leave them like that for a minute. Hold on. Move them over, and I'm going to grab another piece of deli paper, and I like to use Collage Podge, because that's what I have. I think I got this at Hobby Lobby. We just re recently got a Hobby Lobby, so, um, and it's pretty close to my house, so I go there quite a bit. Um, where is my old scruffy bra? Here, right here, right in front of my face. So... Um, you just want to make sure that there are no air bubbles. Now, depending, like I said, depending on the thickness of your paper. So if it's a very thick card stock, you might, it's going to take a little extra to hold it. But this is a nice, um, for collaging anyway, ply of paper. I don't know if that's what you call it, ply. And... Um, it really sticks pretty good. So you're just going to center this on your board. You have a little fudged, oops, see, I, I did it. But I do like to do both the stick and the paper. There we go. I got it centered on there pretty good. And then I have, you just use a piece of the stick and just kind of brayer it down, like get rid of those air bubbles, and then I'll do a coat on the top. And that kind of saturates the paper, and I'm going to set it, let's see, I need another, I'm going to set it on here to dry, and so I'm going to do that to all of them, and then I'll come back and show you how to finish them off. But it's such a simple little project and I think for the, you know, for the effort and I mean, if I know we all have tons of scrapbook paper and it doesn't have to be Christmas paper. Like I showed you, it can, oh, this is glue, duh. Um, it can just be lace, fabric, um, napkins. It can be whatever. Um, or paint, but my whole point of this one was to do it with paper because yeah, obviously you could paint them um, But the paper that we have our scrapbook paper is so cute And I've stopped buying scrapbook paper. I don't I mean I did buy this one today because it was a half price <laughs> but um, I Just like to see because I have so much I'll never use all the scrapbook paper that I have so this type of a project is super fun to use up some of your scrapbook paper. All right, so I'll go off camera and I'll finish all that and I'll be back for the back for the next step. Okay, so the next step is cutter bee scissors. So everything's dry. Before I assemble it though, I want to I need to cut off just the little edges of the paper that are sticking out and then and I sand it too because I like that rustic look that it gives but also it just makes it look cleaner I'm kind of picky with my projects I like it to look neat I mean it's an ornament it's not a work of art really right but get it close to the edge usually you'll get a couple of little strings of, of paper because I'm also going to sand it so that and I like to do it with the back facing up on my own camera sorry kind of sitting back in my chair a little bit 
just get right up against it still a little wet actually you can do it from the front or the back I don't like to get glue on my cutter B scissors but hey there's always other cutter B scissors I can get that's Matt <laughs> Matt's in the basement. Sometimes his voice carries up here. I don't know if it'll pick up on camera. Um, and then you're going to sand it again, but this time it's to get that little bit of um, a grunge look. Not grunge, but yeah, I mean, I guess it's, uh, it's a look, right? And then on these... I edged everything with the Tim Holtz Distress Ink um, Vintage Photo. So you just take it and you hit, and it see how it, it coats the wood and it gets on the paper. So it really gives it a nice antique -y look. And this time I was thinking of doing that, or I kind of really like that, to be honest with you. I was, because I did it on this one too. I was thinking we could edge it with gold paint or silver paint in this case. I meant to do this one with gold paint, but then I just did it with the ink. And I really like the ink because it's kind of an old world. Like this is Victorian or vintage, and this is the old world style. So I really like that. Um, but this time I was actually thinking of using paint. So I'm, I think I'm going to do it with the silver paint because I just want to see what it looks like. And again, you know, you might not all have, although I think everyone has uh, Distress Inks. Um, it was one of the first scrapbooking tool things I got when I was first on YouTube and getting into this whole thing. Um, they're awesome. There's so much you can do with them. Um, so, let's just do the paint. Or, oh, I didn't do this one yet. All right, so I'm going to put that aside. And I would just take my sandpaper one more time, which is so messy to do inside. I'm used to sanding outside. I generally um, try to do that outside. But what you want to do, and I'll come in. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. Is I really want the paper and the wood to become one. So you can't tell where the wood starts and the paper begins type thing. I don't know if that makes sense. But you want to go up against the paper edge. Don't do it against the grain. Well, I just did. Um, but you'll get little rolls of paper sometimes that come off. But man, it is such a cool look. And then when you add that vintage photo, which I'm not going to do this time, it just adheres to the... See, there's a little bit right there. So let's see this piece. See this piece has those jaggly edges and this one's just like it's connected. So let's do this. Again, it's not necessary, but I think it is just a little bit more of a finished look. And it gives you that nice grungy finish. I get these little rolls of paper. And in this case, we're going to add paint. Anywho, so you would do that to all of your different things. And then all I'm going to do is, I'll just do this on camera, a little bit of silver metallic paint. And I've done this with my finger before, but I'm just going to use a makeup sponge. You can use a paintbrush or whatever. And just, just as you would do with the Tim Holtz, you're going to 
kind of come at it from the top so that a little bit will go and I kind of just pat it on but you want it a little bit to go on to the top of the paper like leave a little like um, what would it be called a little lip of paint up there and I have glue on my finger that looks oh see I went too hard on that so this is a little messier obviously because it's paint but no fear I always have a q-tip a q-tip near so I just take it metallic paints leave a residue sometimes of like um, shininess glittery mica whatever they use to give it that metallic but it will be great and I'm gonna like I said I'm gonna use that glittery varnish oops see now I'm just getting it so this is much messier I have glue on my thumb so let me just fix that part but I like it I'm gonna put this I'm gonna do all of them and then I'll come back and we'll, I'll just glue I'll show you how I line it up to glue I'll be right back okay everything's dry so here's what we're gonna do I like to use my good old weld bond weld bond is a glue that I, was recommended to me uh, for doing mosaics and it's just a white glue but it's very strong and it works for most surfaces so I'm using weld bond um, use your favorite adhesive and the first thing I like to do is adhere the base how does this music go I don't know I don't think it matters the base and the star so I do those first and then I just use a little in the middle not a ton and like I said this metallic paint kind of has a shininess to it and I like this the point of the star to go facing up just the way I like it doesn't mean it has to go like that do it your way put your own spin on it that's what I love about this all our trees would look different based on our what we have in our stash based on our stash and our little twist right oops try not to get glue on everything it just takes the shine off the metallic paint okay oops but I see some glue sticking out down there all right whatevs so that's kind of how I do that let me zoom in a little bit I hate to zoom because I forget and then I get out of the shot all right and then we'll do the same thing for the base I eyeball things but I am going to line this up on my mat and I'll show you so I just put a little like I usually in doing mosaics I would do put glue on both surfaces but for this I'm not the this wood is such a light wood so I would line it up straight just make sure that like if this is centered am I in the shot sorry I'm gonna I want to pull the camera forward a little I'm sorry I just feel like I'm okay that's much better all right so I just use my little grid on here to make sure it's straight so this is about one inch wide this little base so I can just and then give good pressure so now I'm gonna line up starting at the top so my smallest and I just eyeball it to see but you leave like a quarter inch I want to say of space in between each one this is a reindeer you can't tell unless you really know but a quarter like a little quarter in oh geez see I'm out of the shot again because I'm zoomed um, but yeah so see you have plenty of space and again that's all I do I would just put this on my grid and so say I'm centered right now on this line so the tip of my star and my base go there 
and I just take and I start at the top because it doesn't matter if you have a little extra room at the bottom and I just eyeball wherever put some glue in the center of the thing and then I'm gonna put my head in the shot a little bit but like so I'm just lining this up like evenly so make sure it's at like a quarter inch it touches a quarter inch and then just give pressure yeah and it's a little slippery like if it was raw wood it would take so quick but because it's on metallic I just want to make sure that's straight it's a little slower to to catch but it definitely will hold and I just do that all the way down so this is a two inch piece and I can obviously just see but see how that's moving that's because of the metallic paint that's what my feeling is anyway so maybe you don't paint your center post and like just make sure this is in the middle but I would put this to line to line that's how I do it and I like to wipe away the globs of glue so you're gonna go down your whole thing just like that and then you have a little star and then it's time to accessor I mean not star tree sorry I was thinking about the star because I think the star matches this so like I probably should have put a gold star like let's see where my gold star is let's see if that looks see I think that like shows up better I think I might glue that on there instead I can just pop that off I'll put a gold star on I want to paint it because I just think it's too much silver because I did everything in silver but this is the last little thing I want to show you and I kind of like the medium star but I think I'm gonna I'll paint a gold star a star gold with the a small gold star I want to show you so on these two I never put the um, the hangers on there so on the back of these I've been doing um, like a little accessory so on this one I put a pearl on this one I put a little green flower like a flower button and this one's just a little piece of like fabric or a piece of lacy stuff just to kind of make it look neater so I have this whole bucket of things here um, let's see I could put a wooden thing I have this little thing of wooden things like a little butterfly would be cute Oh, a bird like a spriggle I kind of don't want to use them because I want to use them for but I like the butterflies these I don't want to use them all up I have birds so anyway what you're gonna do is so on this one I'm gonna put this little wooden butterfly but see I have these little gems whatever you have a little pe like there's a bow this will show though because I did I almost put the bow on it yesterday but the bow is going to stick out um, so you take this then you take your piece of ribbon and this is a really 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 fine ribbon right here but just cut yourself off a length about like you know six inches or something I don't know but enough that you can fit it around a little um, tree branch and I like to keep the fabric flat like that because that way when you're hanging your ornament it tends to face forward if you put the I know Kiwi you can hear her where is she oh she left she doesn't want to be on camera anyway so I've been doing it like that so I use my Fabri-Tac and I don't it's not um, shook down right now so I could let me just try it with this so I'll put a blob of glue I'm gonna do one at a time right behind the star well helps if you open it A little bit like that and then I'm being so particular 
but I will lay this in that squish it down and then making sure that this stays I will lay this down I think I did it the wrong way like that so in other words the flat side of the ribbon stays on the same side I don't know it just I like the way it hangs better when I do that and then I might as well put a little bit on here but I don't really need it talk about a little bit I wonder if I'll be able to see the butterfly though I think we're gonna be able to see it I'm not gonna use a butterfly I'm just gonna use I want something flat like a snowflake, a piece of ribbon. Let me just use one of these stinking things. Yeah, I'm not prepared. Here we go. This is my like random something random. I'm going to use this blue uh butterfly. It doesn't match at all. I have nothing green. Oh my gosh, why can't I be prepared? A button. I'm using a button. It's like a flower button. I'm really getting crazy over this. And it, it does not take me this long normally. This is, of course, because I'm on camera. But then I just put the button. And it's not a flat back, so I can feel that I didn't cut the shank off all the way flat. So we'll see if it adheres. But that's how I've been making my little hangers. So I'll let that set up. I'm sure it'll dry just fine. I'm telling you that weld bond really really holds I you know what I'll switch it because what I mean by it had a um, a bale like a shank right let me just put this butterfly it'll be a surprise more glue why not and this should be hidden there we go because that's nice and flat I like that better. It makes me happy. That should stay. All right, so that's. And then see how the. F anyway, I'm being a little particular. So that's it, you guys. I hope you try this. It's super fun. And usually, I don't know if you guys have. Um, what are these called? Popsicle sticks. And I don't think these are actually truly popsicle sticks. These are more like the size of a tongue depressor. Um, but popsicle sticks would work perfectly. I should get some because I would like to see the difference. They would be a little more petite. Don't forget about your ribbons and trims and all your embellishments. You can use buttons for ornaments. So have fun. You can even do these with the kids. And... Um, give them away as random acts of kindness and your ornament for this year. All right, you guys, that's it. Thanks for watching.